Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Houston Texans next on Madden Football. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Coming up, we've got a good one here in the AFC as it'll be the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on the Houston Texans. Brandon Gordon joined, as always, by Charles Davis. As CD, it's been a tough few years here in Houston. Four, four, and three. Those are their win totals the last three seasons. But in is D'Amico Ryan's as head coach. What do you think he brings to the table? And it's interesting you brought up the number three because D'Amico Ryan's is the third head coach in three seasons for this team. What he brings to the table, toughness, organization, and hope. He wanted to be the head coach of the Houston Texans, the team he played for. Well, meanwhile, the visiting Steelers come into 2023 with something to prove. They finished above 500 at 9 and 8 last year, but wound up on the outside looking in in terms of the playoff race. And you and I both know how it is around Pittsburgh. Death taxes and the Steelers finish 500 or above. They want to get beyond that. They want to get back to those days when the Steelers were playing deep into the playoffs for the chance to go to the Super Bowl. And they feel like this team is continuing to get better. And we are underway from NRG Stadium in Houston. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. The Steelers offense set for their first possession here, and it's Kenny Pickett who will lead the way, the second-year man, Charles, from Pitt. Pickett didn't quite lead Pittsburgh to the promised land in his first season as the hometown kid and franchise quarterback, but he did impress once he got in the field, winning seven games helped keep the vaunted streak of non-losing seasons alive in the Steel City. for 10 yards and it'll be second and very short now that's the way you want to start a drive talk about a tone setter as well as a playbook opener now if you want to take a big shot over the top you're all positioned to do so second down here's Pickett that's caught Allen Robinson that one a first down pickup of eight and eight yard pickup Pick it now from the gun here. He throws it on the move but can't connect as that falls incomplete. Well, he certainly didn't like what he saw all from the coverage on his primary reads, and he didn't even have any luck trying to get back to his safety valve. Give defense a credit. Coverage was in lockdown mode everywhere. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Here's Pickett. And his throw is incomplete. Give him credit for excellent coverage, tight coverage. They do a lot of things that we talk about in basketball that cause a disruption in the passing game. And as long as that continues, it'll be tough for them to gain any momentum throwing the ball downfield. So back to back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Pickett. Pressure and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. The corner blitz gets there as he goes down for a loss of seven. How about that? The defense's first sack. It doesn't come from one of the usual suspects up front. It comes from the secondary. Yeah, I think they caught the quarterback off guard a little bit because he wasn't able to account for the possibility of that blitz and change the blocking assignment. He comes through and puts him on the ground. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. So here are the Texans now with a fresh face at quarterback, the second overall pick from Ohio State, C.J. Stroud. 
In only two seasons, Stroud showed all he needed to at Ohio State. All-American, Heisman finalist, program records galore. He looked every bit like the number one overall pick. He went number two, but Houston is thrilled to have him. A man coming off a great rookie year, it's Damian Pierce. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. Not a huge play, but I think they're more than happy with how it turned out. Don't be surprised to see them revisit that call because there was a lane there for more than just five yards. Put it in your back pocket and break it out when you need it later. Here's a second and five now from the 25. Now Stroud. And that nearly an interception here on this opening drive, but he gets a reprieve. It's third down. That was well played, but that was also an example of a corner who understands his coverage, realized he had support behind him, and could be a little more aggressive in the shorter zone, and did exactly that, knocking that pass away. From the gun on third down, here's Stroud. Work in the middle of the field, he's got a man complete. And they work this well upfield across the 35. That third down conversion, good for 23. First and ten, it's Pierce, and he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. They suspected that it was a power play up the middle coming at him, and boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. Ball right on the 50-yard line, and here's the second and eight. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. A uh, short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. It'll be a gain of five, and now it's third and three. Well, from their point of view, this game could not be starting out much better, could it? Force a punt on defense, and now they're moving it crisply on offense. Crisply, I like that. Like yeah, that? yeah, moving it very, very well. Looks like the defense on their heels a little bit. You put a score in here, long way to go, but you're right, that's a heck of a start. Yeah, and I think this is where the play caller is looking at his play sheet and saying, Grab that dagger play. Grab that play and just finish him off right now because I think they'd love to get that big advantage early. Yeah, this is going to depend on the spot, but I believe he might be a few inches short. It'll be called a gain of two, and that'll leave him with some options here on fourth and inches. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys are playing the inside, those inside linebackers, they're going to just run and hit. And he is going to have a Texans first down. As they wind up getting close to 10 yards there, they only needed one on fourth and one. Good spot on the field to go for it. Kind of no man's land, as they call it, and it worked out. Yeah, they call it no man's land because your punter is telling you it's too short. I'm just going to punt it into the end zone. Your field goal kicker might give you a little raised eyebrow. Might be too far for the field goal. So it gives you a great chance to go for it. Personally, if you have those tendencies to be aggressive as a head coach, you kind of like this spot because it gives you the decision to go ahead and go for it when you want to anyway. No score after one on EA Sports. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Pierce takes it straight ahead, and he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped him. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. They run with the former Buffalo Bill, Devin Singletary. And they'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. 
Devin Singletary. A 10 yard touchdown run. And the Texans post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. I know the play ends up in the end zone with one person carrying the ball, but how about that big mass of humanity that guided him to that spot? Yeah, they got there, but I love the dive. Always a fan of the dive. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And it's now a 7 nothing game. So that drive goes a full 80 yards in 10 plays. And it was finished off by a Devin Singletary touchdown run. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. They'll be looking to match that touchdown from a moment ago. 7-0 is the score as they begin with a first down. to throw, pick it. Going to throw right side here, complete. A big play that time for Pittsburgh. 43 yards. And this is how you answer a touchdown the other end. You come out throwing to start your own drive. And not just throwing, but pushing it down the field. And they come up with a big play as they try to answer back with a score of their own. So that changes things a bit. Here's a first and 10 all the way down at the 35. Pickett will look to throw it here. He's got this to Pickens. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. George Pickens, 35 yards. And the Steelers are an extra point away from drawing level. And a nice job by him to catch the slant and then navigate and break free. And receivers love slant routes because it gets the ball in their hands so quickly and oftentimes on the move. And when they're on the move like that, then they get to use their best asset, which is usually their speed. And their speed sometimes, like this instance, can take them into the end zone. Boswell good with the extra point. And we are tied at seven. So all even at seven now as they kick it away. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. Start on the ground with Pierce. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45 yard line. Just like that, a pickup of 20 on their first play from scrimmage. His first carry in their second drive, pretty solid. And of course, remember back to their first drive, really strong throughout that one. Not only is he getting good blocking up front, but how about his vision to find the holes? And he's seeing things before they even open and hurdling through them. 
First down, they go right back to Pierce. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. That's uh, a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. A shotgun snap to Stroud. That'll be caught left side by Woods. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 44-yard line. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Here's Stroud. He finds his target. It's Schultz. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Throwing now is Stroud. He's got it to Collins, complete. And inside the train before he's brought down. 15 more there. And oh, it's another first down. And as a quarterback, you know, there's big gaps in the defense. He finds one here. Crossing route, looking from right to left across the field. And once you get defenders going in the wrong direction, it is awfully hard for them to pivot back, and you end up getting the first down. Throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. That's a tough spot for a running back coming out of the backfield because you know he's got to look for the football. Knowing full well, he's got a man coming his way full steam, and he broke that one up. Second and 10. Second and 10. Stroud to throw yet again here. Rookie QB, we talk a lot about his ball placement and how good he can be at laying it right in there. I think we just saw, Charles, though, the strength of that arm. That was an absolute rifle for the completed touchdown. It absolutely was, and let's face it, you think he was really ready to get that first touchdown? Absolutely. He threw that pass with authority, just as you described. Big time arm right there, and let's face it, a lot of quarterbacks just be pitchers in baseball. The fastball was usually their best pitch, and we saw it there. Austin elects to bring this out of the end zone. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Out comes the Steeler offense now, ready to see what they can do here. Well, Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left. More than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. First and ten, here's Pickett setting up the screen. Harris finding space at the 40 and past the 40 before he's out of bounds. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. And that's not a play that you see all that often at the start of a drive, but some teams, they don't mind doing it. And that one, well sold by the offensive linemen. They showed the pass, and then they got out into space, able to get some good blocks downfield and allow the play to be successful. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. 
Now a second and ten. From the gun, here's Pickett. He gets it complete to Harris. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes it gets that. You get out to your running back, and it could turn into a big game downfield. What a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. Pickett, he's going to throw it again. Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. On fifth down, here's Presley Harvin on to punt. This is brought in at the 21. A terrific return there. 27 yards all told. And the Texans will take over. You don't see that too often, Charles. He punted that away and then hustled up to make the stop as well. Yeah, because oftentimes they serve as their own safety after punting it. You want to be the last guy, but he decided to get involved in the action, didn't he? And what a spark that's got to provide for the rest of his team when they see their punter out there making a nice hit. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10. Just shy of midfield at the 48. Stroud working out of the gun. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. He was trying to get that one out to his running back out in the backfield, but that one was read and timed perfectly, and they were able to break it up. Here's second and 10. Second and ten. Here's Stroud. That's complete. It's Collins. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Stroud now on first and ten. Another one caught by Collins. And they're going to have a first down and also well into field goal range. All the way down to the 15 here. This dude will lock in 14 yards there. And a first down. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. This just 32 yards officially from the right hash. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And they will move up by 10 now, 17 to 7. So a capper there to a pretty good first half. And I love the way that they put a chokehold on the clock and pretty much drained everything before they put the field goal on the board as they headed into the half. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game. 
As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports halftime report. We were witness to a solid first half from this year's number two overall pick rookie, C.J. Stroud. He's got a touchdown pass on the ledger as his guys were able to build a double-digit lead. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. A 10-point game, 17-7 to score as we get back to it on EA Sports. Taken at the goal line. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. The Texans going to take over here to start quarter number three. And Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half, they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it, but I think these first couple of drives, they'll want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities, and I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. And he'll take this one up over the 20 to the 21-yard line. Give him four yards there on the first down keeper. Well, if you're going to run the read option, typically, you've got to keep an eye on the defensive end. And what does that mean? What are you looking for with a defensive end? Well, you want to play off of what he does. If he collapses inside towards the running back, then you pull it and take it yourself outside in. If he stays outside, you go ahead and leave it with the running back. In this case, pulled it and got good yardage himself. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. A fresh set of downs on a gain of 13 there for the Texans. That's another beautiful throw right there. It gets it to his man right in stride. And I think that throw kind of exemplifies what we've seen from this offense throughout this game. They've been in rhythm. They've been sharp. They've been on it. And they pick up another first down there. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. This defense trying to do its part, active hands on that play, but their offense hasn't given them much to work with. So they're not going to worry about it. On their side of the ball, all they're concerned about, can they create some scoring opportunities and help out that offense? Second and 10. Thanks for tagging along with us here from Houston, Texas. On second down, here's Pierce. And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Here's third and nine. Stroud on third down now. Pass taken in by his good tight end. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 42. That third down conversion, good for 23. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. Stroud sets up the play action. Open man downfield is Woods. Touchdown, Texans. Robert Woods, 42 yards. And his guy's now an extra point away from taking a three-score lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical is one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now, starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. 
Fairbairn good with the extra point. And that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. This taken in right around the goal line. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Time for the Steelers offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 24. Harris will start to drive out. And trying to push forward, but he is going to be stuffed up in the backfield. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Pickett back to throw. Looking for Pickens. He's got him on the out run. And he's going to be wrangled down quickly after the catch up at the 45-yard line. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. Well, we talk all the time about playing situational football, and right now I think the scoreboard is dictating what they need to do. Where they are in this game, they've got to push the ball downfield, take their shots, try and get big chunks of yardage in a short amount of time. That was a nice play there. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Pickett sets up play action. He's got his man downfield. It's Robinson. And get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. It's a gain of 34. And this offense needed something to try and seize the momentum a little bit. That might have been exactly what they needed. Now they have a chance to go downfield and score and cut into the lead. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Off play action, pick it. That throw finds Pickens in the end zone. Touchdown Steelers. A great play there with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Steelers are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. So a very important first drive of the third quarter, Charles, and safe to say, a much-needed touchdown. Which leads to the question, what was this in the first half? Because if they'd had a few more drives like that, they wouldn't be in this situation. But that is the kind of drive that sends a message to the other side. We're going to be here, and we're going to battle you to the end. Extra point put through by Boswell. And the lead down to 10, 24-14. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Robert Woods of the Texans back out there. Pretty good game for him so far. I guess he's still got time here to make this a great game, but so far, he's been solid. I like where you're going with that because it has been pretty good. 
but there's always that hint that things can really escalate for him. And right now, they, they feel like they're somewhat keeping him in check, but he has found the end zone once, but boy, he can explode at any moment. Yeah, and when you hit that end zone once, you want to find it again, don't you? <laughs> yes, make, you do. Makes you, get, you hungrier. You, you get greedy in a good way. Singletary to get the drive started. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. An opportunity to get a drive started here at the end of the third quarter. What you're trying to do is break the game down a little bit. Don't let your guys see too deep into the game, into the future, and say, oh, we got to get here. No, right here, right in front of them. Melt the clock down, get to the fourth quarter, try and keep going. And try to keep that lead. Exactly. Six yards, the pickup, and that's a first down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Houston. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Man in motion left. That's Collins. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. So it's the big left tackle who gets tagged with a hold. And sometimes you're actually executing the block well, and he starts to slip off of you, and instinctively you reach out and grab him. And when it's done like that, it's often seen by the official and called. Uh, give left side for Pierce. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. The second down throw now from Stroud. To Pierce, they set up the screen. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. That's on Shaq Mason, the guard. Still second down. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Stroud looking to throw. And that's going to be incomplete. Going with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive bats on the field have covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. The Texans on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and 16. Stroud here on third and long. He's got a man complete. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. That was no third and two. That was third and 16, but they get the conversion anyway. And this is seemingly how it's been all game long. This defense has been just a step too slow. And here they're burned again. Another big play. So the big play gets them across midfield now for first and 10. And Stroud now to throw. Finds his man, it's John Mechie. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Add the gain here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. And the passing game continues to be their friend, even with a stable lead here in the fourth, Charles. They're going back to that well. Yeah, with their overall philosophy, you know that they trust their quarterback. He's been able to throw it well. They continue to throw these safe passes. Who can blame them? Set the man in motion too late. This is going to be a delay. That flag accepted, and it backs the offense up a little bit. Still 
first down. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. A handoff on the option to Singletary. And just grip downhill running there as he'll take this to the 15 yard line. A good game again. It's now 41 yards combined on those last two plays. Starting to look like this drive will maybe the final nail in the coffin. Well, this is why you work out so hard, right? This is why you spend all that time in the offseason. This is why you have those OTAs and mini camps for these situations, these scenarios to run someone into the ground and secure a victory. And got his man, it's caught. Touchdown, Houston. Dalton Schultz, a 15-yard touchdown ground. And the Texans are an extra point away from making this a three-score game. He has really settled in throwing the football, and that touchdown here in the fourth quarter gives him a pretty comfortable cushion. He may be a rookie, but he's playing like fourth quarter and the QB is easy. How about this guy? Youngster, not worrying about anything, just cutting it loose and having fun. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. Now the Steelers' offense gets ready to get back onto the field. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Here's Pickett. Here's Firemuth again. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. There's a good push to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. Speed. I mean, can flat-out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? Meanwhile, Pickett's throw here taken in by Boykin. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give him that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Now they got to get to the line quickly. They'll throw again with Pickett. Got an open man, it's Pickens. Seven yards there and a first down. And he's certainly been a huge factor in this one. He's got the two touchdowns to his credit. Now they look to him again. He picks up the first. Yeah, I can hear everyone saying, well, why don't you cover him, double him, triple him, do what you have to do. But sometimes they get locked into such a groove and such a connection, it doesn't matter how many guys are in his area. He certainly looks to be in that groove right now. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as he'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this fourth quarter. Now second and nine. Now pick it. Pressure applied, and he's going to be taken down. He's sacking back at the 34-yard line. Denzel Perryman with a sack. 
situation you cannot take a sack in a two-minute drill pick it in the Steelers in need of a big play here third and long after the sack well, here's a look for the end zone but that one's going to wind up incomplete even such a big lead late the effort has not lost one bit if the offense wants to score some points in this one they've got to earn it these guys are not giving up anything no choice but to go. Here's fourth down now. Pick it, fourth down, desperation time. He's got his target. That's complete. Now we'll get whistles, and they signaled for a timeout. Not sure I see the logic in this, but we'll get a stoppage anyway with five seconds remaining. Final shot for Pickett. And caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Allen Robinson, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Steelers have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. Extra point now by Boswell. And the lead is trimmed down to ten. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it's Allen Robinson who caps things off with a touchdown. So time definitely not in their favor. Down two scores, but they'll try the onside kick. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a cap on this one. And that's why you have your hand team out there on the field. Those are the best guys ready to make that play. And let's face it, it was executed well. It wasn't a bad kick. It wasn't anything like that. Just that the normal outcome actually came to play. Analytics would tell you it's a very low possibility of getting the ball for the team kicking it in an onside kick situation. You're all about the numbers, aren't all you? All about the numbers, baby. It's a new game now. They don't lie. So no shortage of offense in this game. A very clean game, too, Charles. Each side got its points, but they did so without committing a single turnover. That's so true, and it certainly felt like NFL football at its finest, right? You talk about the highest level for both of these offenses. Neither one of them afraid of taking risks, and both of them aggressively pushing it downfield. I did like, Brandon, how smart they were about going about their business, though. They were high-flying, but they took care of the ball. Yeah, they did, and just keeping it clean in a game